I would like now to go through some examples where we use our equation for uh, the location of an image and pick some examples uh, taking uh, different kinds of mirrors. So if you remember, our starting equation here is 1 over p plus 1 over i is 1 over f. This relates the location of the object in front of a mirror to the location of its image and the focal length of the mirror. So I've drawn an example now with a flat mirror or sometimes called a plane mirror. I've drawn a little object here standing in front of this mirror. It's a little arrow. Uh, it's the base of the arrow is sitting along the center axis and the tip of the arrow is up there. And of course if light is coming off of the tip of this arrow, where is it going to, you know, going to go? It's going to go in all different directions. I've drawn a couple different rays of light and I've drawn these particular rays of light such that they obey the, uh, the law of reflection. Notice that they reflect off at the same angle they come in. And notice that the light rays never meet. They instead, if I was an observer over on this side, uh, they never meet at my eye, but they would appear to come from a common origin right there. And so in fact, this image is over on the V side. So if the eye represents the distance from the mirror to the image, I can immediately anticipate uh, mentally that I is a negative number. But we'll see that come out in this equation. Okay. I would like now to go through some examples where we use our equation for uh, the location of an image and pick some examples uh, taking uh, different kinds of mirrors. So if you remember, our starting equation here is 1 over p plus 1 over i is 1 over f. This relates the location of the object in front of a mirror to the location of its image and the focal length of the mirror. So I've drawn an example now with a flat mirror or sometimes called a plane mirror. I've drawn a little object here standing in front of this mirror. It's a little arrow. Uh, it's the base of the arrow sitting along the center axis and the tip of the arrow is up there. And of course if light is coming off of the tip of this arrow, where is it going to, you know, going to go? It's going to go in all different directions. I've drawn a couple different rays of light and I've drawn these particular rays of light such that they obey the, uh, the law of reflection. Notice that they reflect off at the same angle they come in. And notice that the light rays never meet. They instead, if I was an observer over on this side, uh, they never meet at my eye, but they would appear to come from a common origin right there. And so in fact, this image is over on the V side. So if the eye represents the distance from the mirror to the image, I can immediately anticipate uh, mentally that I is a negative number. But we'll see that come out in this equation. The equation again is 1 over p plus 1 over i is equal to 1 over f. Focal length, f, if you recall, is r over 2, r being the radius of curvature of the mirror. This happens to be a case where the mirror is flat and the radius of curvature is infinitely far or infinitely large. That is to say, if there is a curvature to this mirror, it's very, very small and the center of curvature would be very, very far away and r goes off to infinity. If r is going to infinity, then f is going to infinity and 1 over f is pretty close to zero. In this case, we'll just say it is zero. So the equation now simplifies 1 over p plus 1 over i is equal to zero and in fact, if you solve for i, you'll find that p is equal to negative i and the picture is more or less drawn correctly. In other words, if the object is located 10 centimeters in front of the mirror, the image is going to be located 10 centimeters behind the mirror. The little minus sign there tells me that the image distance i is negative because if, it, if negative i has to equal p and p is always a positive number, then the only way for that to be true is for i to be a negative number. So this tells me that the image distance is less than zero. It's an image that's going to be a so-called virtual image because it's on the V side. And the image is exactly as far back into the mirror as the object is in front of the mirror. And that's something we saw uh, in the past when we tried just conceptually pay, uh, drawing lines or rays for re reflected light off of a mirror. The other thing which I've not uh, pointed out here is that the magnification will equal plus one because magnification is minus i over p. And since minus i equals p, this is the magnification of plus one. That means that the object uh, and the image have the same apparent size. If I am standing up and I am six feet tall and I'm standing in front of a large mirror, I will see an image of myself and it will appear to be six feet tall. 
and because the magnification is exactly one. The, the image is exactly the same size as the object. Furthermore, since magnification is positive in this case, it's an upright image. I will not look in the mirror and see myself upside down. And that may be unusual to you, but there are cases where the, mirror, the image looks upside down relative to real life. That's the flat mirror. Let's try to look at some cases of curved mirrors now. So here's an example of what is called a concave mirror, or ca you know, think of something that's again caved in. If the object is placed on this side, and this is the shiny side of the mirror, then this is the R side, this is the V side. Again, we have to keep in mind everything in terms of signs, positive and negative, goes relative to what's on the R side and what's on the V side. P is the distance between the mirror and the object. It's always the distance between that point on the mirror and the object. This is a positive number right here like I've written because it's on the object itself is on the R side. The radius of curvature is positive because the center of curvature is over here and if I were to draw a little radius over to any point on the mirror uh, it goes from that center of curvature over to the mirror. Since the center of curvature is on the R side, R, this radius R is on is a positive number as well. Now, I don't know about I yet. I've written down that it's negative, but we actually have to find that out. Um, how will we do that? Well, we go back to our expression, 1 over I plus 1 over P equals 1 over F. And we'll have to solve for I. I just wrote that it's I, I is less than 0 in this case because I kind of was looking at this sketch that I made. But you may actually find out cases where I is positive or I is negative. And if I is negative, that means the image is over here on this side of the mirror. And if you find out uh, the magnification is positive, then it means it's upright. And if you find out the magnification is bigger than 1, then it means the image is actually bigger than the object. But you may, depending on what you've put into that expression, find a value for I that comes out to be positive. In other words, the image is over on this side of the mirror. And you may find out that it's less than 1 uh, because the, ob the image is smaller than the object itself. I, didn't, I probably should not have you know, taken a specific example here, but I just sketched one for our reference. And I, I'm just telling you in advance, sometimes the image will be on here, over here. Sometimes the image will be over there. And if I gave you P and I gave you F, I want you to be able to calculate I and find out for me What's the sign? In other words, is it over on this, the real virtual side or the real side? And what's the magnification? So we always have to keep in mind magnification is minus i over p. And whether, if it's positive, it's upright. If it's negative, it's inverted. So that's a concave mirror. There's another example for the convex mirror. This is one that is bowed out. And Something here to keep in mind is that uh, I have again have to put down an R side and a V side. I just sorry, I'm just adjusting here. The R side will be where I put my object. If this is the shiny surface, and this is the back side of the mirror, I put my object out in front of the mirror, and there it is, right there. P is this distance from the object to the mirror. It's always positive because I always put my object in front of the mirror, which means it's on the R side. Here, since this is the circular surface of the mirror, the center of curvature is back behind the mirror. I can't actually get to there uh, with real light, because light always reflects over that side. If the center of curvature is over here, then this radius of curvature is negative. And as a result, F, the focal length, will be negative. And when I write down 1 over p plus 1 over i is equal to 1 over f, I happen to know that I will always find a number for i that is negative here. But again, if you were given the focal length and you were given the image, uh, the object distance, excuse me, you should be able to calculate this image distance. I know that you will always find it to be a negative number. In other words, the image is over here on the, the v side. And depending on the magnification that you find, or what you calculate here, minus i over p uh, will be positive because it's an upright image. 
If i is a negative number, then minus i is a positive number. p is a positive number. So magnification will come as always to be positive. And it's then up to us to calculate whether or not this magnification is a number bigger than 1 or less than 1. In other words, is the image bigger or smaller than the object? So these are the kinds of problems we'll be doing. We'll be doing uh, calculations where we find out what the image distance is. And we'll be finding out uh, if the image is bigger or smaller than the object. And as a result, we'll all, at the same time, we'll also find out um, whether the image is inverted or upright with respect to real life. So I want to do some practice problems now where we try uh, using these ideas on some specific examples.